Johnny's mad. Yes. They've got this massive debt reduction bill that cuts $23 billion over 10 years. And no future Congress will change its mind. Ever, never. He promises. This would be the same Johnny Boehner who just two years ago, really two, almost two and a half years ago, signed off on the debt ceiling deal. Remember that one that had the sequester cuts in it? And they're not going to back off of that until they back off of it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I will repeat what I told Paul Ryan yesterday. And you've heard it all day long by other hosts, I'm sure. We have over a $90 trillion unfunded liability. Do you know where they come up with that number? From me. It's in the Liberty Amendments, because I calculated it. And ladies and gentlemen, soon it's $100 trillion. You know what that means? That means our kids and their kids and every future generation is going to be destroyed because there's not enough currency on the face of the earth to address that. Then we have what's called the fiscal operating debt. And I distinguish that from the unfunded liabilities, the entitlements, the fiscal operating debt build up from one budget after another, not even counting Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid is almost $17.3 trillion. When my book came out in August, it was $17 trillion. $17.3 trillion. And as a nation, we're focused on $23 billion over 10 years, which is never going to happen. And the media running around talking about, wow, that Washington actually works. And the Republicans saying, anything but a government shutdown. Do they not understand that the whole damn thing's going to shut down and collapse? And it won't just be 17% of the federal government. It'll be your savings. It'll be your mutual funds. It'll be your pension. It'll be the value of your paycheck. It'll be your college fund. It'll be everything. Because once the spiral occurs, there's no undoing it. Because man makes a situation that cannot be fixed until there's an ultimate collapse. It's called the laws of economics, and they are as serious and real as the laws of physics. This is what we're trying to prevent. Well, we're only trying to do what's doable, elect more Republicans. You know, near the end of uh, uh, Sean's program, I heard this congressman, Mike Kelly from uh, Pennsylvania. On and on and on he goes. I'm sure he's a very decent man. On and on and on he goes about what? The American people made a choice in the last election. Well, I would remind Congressman Kelly that the American people made a choice in 2000, and they made a choice in 2004, where we had a Republican President George W. Bush, and we had a Republican House and a Republican Senate for six full years. And you know what we got out of that, ladies and gentlemen? The most profligate spending in American history prior to this president. Oh, and no, it wasn't just 9-11. We once had something called the Vietnam War. We once had something called the Cold War, where we spent a fortune on national security, and necessarily so. That said, the problem was domestic spending. And then what was the excuse? Karl Rove, the architect, sitting at George W. Bush's right knee, all over the Fox News channel telling us these deals are good deals. There's nothing else we can do. And not just him. They're all over the place. The naysayers. Well, we can feel comfortable with them, right? We can keep doing this. But one day it comes crashing down. Obama might be out of office. Boehner might be out of office. McConnell. Fox News may or may not still be on the air, but the system will crash. You can't keep doing this. And they tell us, we have a bipartisan deal. It's the best we can do, which is exactly why I say, maybe it is the best they can do. They designed this catastrophe. And let me be quite blunt about this. Both parties are in on it. This is why I say, vote conservative. Vote constitutionalist. You support candidates in these Republican primaries who are serious about this stuff. Not just yammering away. 
and John Boehner, he attacks conservatives. How did you know about this budget in advance? Well, leadership was telling everybody in advance, Johnny. One of your own leaders called me. That's right. I won't reveal his name over the weekend. Was that a leak, Johnny? You're going to fire him? And you told him to call people. Your staff, your leadership has been calling quote-unquote opinion makers in the media, on editorial pages, on cable, in talk radio, trying to lay the groundwork for support for something like this. No, I didn't know the final outcome, but something like this. And so how did all of you know about it? How did they know to oppose this deal? Oh, there's leakers around us. Yes, you guys are the leakers. Planning your stories. Spinning. Now, I'm going to give you the name of somebody that most of you have never heard of before. And yet he's a patriot. And the goings on on Capitol Hill, the intrigue, quote unquote, on Capitol Hill, the backstabbing and the front stabbing and the kneecapping and all the rest. And yes, all that goes on, politically speaking. The gentleman's name is Paul Teller. He served with a group called the Republican Study Committee. The Republican Study Committee was established in the House of Representatives by conservative Republicans many, many years ago to make their own proposals, to challenge Republican leadership, to challenge the rhinos in the House. It has been a stick in their craw from day one. So what Johnny Boehner did when he became Speaker is not only populate every single chairmanship of every major committee and every subcommittee with loyalists, not conservatives necessarily, but primarily loyalists. He also took a run at the Republican Study Committee. And they had a divided vote. And because of that process, one of his allies, Steve Scalise, Republican Louisiana, became chairman. Ah, oh, that's right, I'm telling you all the facts. Became the chairman of the Republican Study Committee. And the executive director there, Paul Teller, had been there for 10 years, 12 years, whatever. I've never personally met the man. I've never personally spoken to the man. I think we exchanged one email. One email where he asked that I would put Mr. Scalise on my show to discuss the Republican Study Committee's health care proposal. That was it. He was very honorable, straightforward, and that's what I did. The man has a stellar reputation, and today they're trying to destroy him. Today they're trying to ruin him. Because in addition to Boehner going out in front of the microphone and trashing you, we the people, conservatives, then his henchman Scalise went out and purged Teller. Like the old Soviets putting out the line, oh, he's a leaker. He leaked. Let me tell you something, Johnny Boehner, you're a leaker. So is Cantor. So is McCarthy. So are their staffs. And so are others. Because you know, some of your people contact my people. As over the weekend, one of your leadership members spoke to me on my cell phone and called me to tell me what was going down, even though I didn't have the final specifics. And you take out this Paul Teller because you want to finish off the Republican Study Committee. The last vestige of conservatives in the House of Representatives. Ladies and gentlemen, many of you are Republicans. I'm a Republican. But that doesn't mean you have to go along with what goes on in Washington with these people. The vast majority of us never voted for John Boehner. He's a congressman. We never voted for Aunt Eric Cantor. He's a congressman. Or this guy McCarthy. He's a congressman. And yet they claim to represent you and me. That's the system. But when they don't represent us, we have to speak up. And we have to put pressure on them. And we do it individually. We do it by conservative organizations. We do it through the media. That is what we have to do. That is the only way the system works. And they despise us. They despise us. I am despised by the Republican leadership. 
because I'm a conservative. I'm a Reaganite. Now this Mike Kelly, who seems like a very decent man, he's got it wrong. Just elect more Republicans. Just elect more Republicans. Well, I want to be very clear about something. You did that in 2000 and 2004, and when we come back, I am going to remind you what happened during that six-year period when we elect more Republicans, which is why you must vote conservative and constitutionalist within these Republican primaries, or nothing's going to change on the federal level, which is also why I believe the ultimate and only recourse is through the state legislatures. Because these people at the federal level, they're not going to change. They are diehards. They are dead-enders. And they're going to take all the rest of us down with them. 